Embedded computers. Embedded computers are tiny systems that are built into chips that sit on a motherboard inside a machine or electronic. They're called computers because inside that tiny chip, you actually have the same basic parts as a normal computer, like CPU, memory, and other stuff too. But the difference is that in a regular computer, these parts are big separate components you can hold in your hand. But in an embedded computer, all of them are shrunk down and packed into a single piece of silicon. But even though they have the same parts, embedded computer isn't built to do many different tasks like a PC. It usually handles just one specific job. For example, the embedded system inside an ATM is built only to read your card, confirm the bank, and give out the money. Or like a smartwatch embedded system that's used for counting steps and tracking your heart rate. Or the more advanced one, like a smart TV that uses its embedded computer to run an operating system, launch apps like YouTube or Netflix, and many more. But the point is, no matter how advanced or smart they get, embedded computers will always be far less powerful than a PC. But that's exactly what makes them cheap, so companies can mass produce them for other electronics. PC. A personal computer or PC is the type of machine most people recognize today, like laptops, desktops, and tablets. But in the past, people didn't call them PC yet, they were known as microcomputers instead. Because at that time, computers were massive. But after the invention of the microprocessor, a whole computer could be built around that single microprocessor chip. So this made them small enough to sit on a desk instead of taking up an entire room. But as this thing became more and more common in homes for personal use, people started calling them personal computers or PC. And in terms of components other than the CPU I just mentioned, a PC also comes with parts like a motherboard, RAM, storage, a graphics card, and other stuff too. Put it together, and these will let you handle everyday things like playing games, browsing the web, or writing documents. And one more thing you need to know, since this is called a personal computer, it is also meant to be used by just one person at a time. Mini computer. A mini computer, which is also called a mid-range computer, is a computer that supports multiple users at once. So unlike a PC that's only for personal use, mini computers were often used as a server for a university, hospital, or medium-sized company because they support at least hundreds to a few thousand users at the same time. And just to make things clear, even though it's also called a mid-range computer, it simply means a mini computer is right in the middle between a microcomputer and a mainframe in terms of size and power. So not because its power is weak, mediocre, or something like that. In fact, even a high-end PC is still nothing compared to a mini computer, because mini computers have multiple processors instead of just one like a PC. And if you usually have like 8 or 16 gigabytes of RAM on your PC, a mini computer can have like 64 or even 128 gigabytes of RAM so that it can handle heavy workloads like running a database server. And unlike a PC that might only have 512 gigabytes or one terabyte of storage, a mini computer can have around five to 10 terabytes or even more to store huge amounts of data for the server. On top of that, they were designed to run nonstop without shutting down. Mainframe. A mainframe is basically like a mini computer, but it's bigger and has superior performance. Both of them are also used as servers, but the scale of a mainframe is much bigger, like national or global level organizations. For example, banks use them to process millions of transactions every second. Airlines use them to manage worldwide flight schedules, and governments use them to store and process citizen records like a census. And all of this is possible because mainframes have hundreds of CPUs to process everything. And while a mid-range computer may come with 64 to 128 gigabytes of RAM and a few terabytes of storage, a mainframe can pack 40 terabytes of RAM and more than one petabyte of storage. Supercomputer. A supercomputer is the biggest and the most powerful type of computer in the world. Unlike mainframes or mini computers that work as servers, supercomputers are built for heavy-duty calculations that need extreme speed and power, like processing massive amounts of data from space telescopes or running 3D models of underground geology that help oil and gas companies find new energy reserves. And this is all possible because supercomputers have thousands of processors, which is far beyond what other computer types have. But because of that, supercomputers will also generate a lot of heat while running. That's why they require special cooling systems, like chilled water pipes. And since a supercomputer is very expensive, only a government or world-level organization has this computer, like NASA, IBM, or Japan's Riken Research Center. Oh, by the way, I made a cool video about every computer generation explained, so don't forget to watch it later, okay?